who here is a member of a CSA? Because you get this bountiful basket of fresh vegetables, fruits, eggs, whatever you sign up for, and um, you're supporting a local farmer as well. As she says, as a non-cook, it's really forced her to look at some of the things that she gets in her box and you know, figure out how to, how to process it. And I am here to sort of teach you and help people figure out what they're supposed to do with all of the produce that they get. The whole idea is to be able um, to take these ingredients out of your box and to do something with it. You have to know how to cook a little bit. Would you agree with that? Right, so you have to kind of know you're going to get this stuff, and it's really great. I mean, you know, it's really great to get it, but then you have to sort of know what to do with it next. And that's really um, my forte and where I come in to the picture, I think, to kind of, you know, close the circle. I give you the recipe, recipe for sautéed red curry with broccoli, right? And then below, I talk about the well-matched broccoli. So what am I talking about here? This is a term that I've coined through Kitchen Q, and basically what it says is, what are the things that go well with broccoli? And how do I know? Okay, I understand how to saute, right? I understand. I do the six steps. I've got it. But how do I know what to put in the pan with my broccoli? So the idea with Kitchen Q is that you learn the six steps, you practice those six steps with a bunch of recipes that are on the DVD and in the little booklet, but then you can start to use these tables that I call the well-matched tables. And these are grids. And so you would click on an ingredient that you have. And for this one, we were talking about saute, and it was, it's pork. So what goes with pork, right? And so I can see all of these things, apple, quince, fennel, cabbage, peaches, white beans, spinach, all of these things. So then in my brain, I'm like, oh, wow, I have white beans in the fridge, or I have white beans in the cabinet. Oh, wow, I have beer downstairs. I can make sauce with some beer and some vegetable broth. Or, you know, so then you can start putting these things together. And look at all the herbs and spices that go with pork. The same thing with vegetables, the same thing with salmon, the same thing with tofu, the same thing with all of the ingredients that you cook with. So if we took our broccoli to Spain, we would use sherry wine vinegar, maybe some orange zest, some pimentos, right? Maybe some hot peppers, definitely some walnuts, right? Think about like places that you've traveled to. Think about food that goes together, grows together, goes together. Those kinds of ideas. So you can see how you can be really begin to reach out beyond where you are now and really elevate not only your style of cooking, but your you know, ability and confidence of cooking. So we have this gorgeous broccoli. I have to say, it tastes really so much different than the broccoli that I find at the grocery store. It's so much, you know, it's so much less green tasting. I love green, I really do. But it's so much sweeter and it's so much more well, it's so much more well, well balanced. And with this broccoli, that it's so young and fresh and beautiful, you can certainly use the stalk. And so what I do to do that is I trim it off. To make sure it's chewable and not so fibrous, I peel just the outside with a paring knife. And it, this goes very fast. And it's really to peel this bottom half, because once you get up to the part of the florets, it's very tender up there, right? But this will ensure that you won't have any sort of fibrous, chewy um, pieces down on the bottom here. And you can feel totally comfortable cutting this up and using these nice long stems. OK, so now we have our pan heating up. And we're going to use the fat to saute. We're going to use coconut milk. I mean coconut oil, sorry. If you don't have coconut oil, you don't want to use it. You can certainly use olive oil or some other fat. But this is a really nice way to tie the whole thing together. So we put a little bit of that in the bottom of the pan, melt it, and we add in our broccoli. And we're just going to saute it a few minutes until it starts to get tender. OK, so I have a nice amount of broccoli, medium heat, a little bit of fat on the bottom of the pan, salt. We always season as we go, right? Because salt does what? It elevates the flavor of food. That when we cook, we can add a little bit of salt. When we cook for ourselves, we add a little bit of salt, we're fine. We get over the amount of sodium that we need when we start to eat processed foods. OK, so if we're cooking for ourselves, we know what's in the food. We should have no problem seasoning our food as we go, right? And seasoning with a little bit of salt and um, not being worried that we're getting too much salt in our diet. And while this is sauteing, we're going to prepare 
um, our powerful flavors that we're going to put into this dish. Ginger and the garlic scapes. So you know ginger, you can peel with a peeler, you can peel it with a knife just like this, and you can also peel it with the back of a spoon. Did you know that? That's really easy. So I just cut it into boards and then I cut the boards into little, like julienne, into little matchsticks. And now we just cut this. Okay, so a little bit of chopped ginger we have and then in here we're going to use our garlic scapes. So I think on your recipe I just wrote garlic because that would be a, you know, something that you could utilize all the time. But because we have these beautiful garlic scapes, we're going to do this. No, so once it starts to curl, then you cut it off and that's like your first benefit to growing garlic. And then your second benefit to growing the garlic is when you take the garlic out of the ground. There's a hard, the end of this is really, some can be very, very fibrous. This one is nice and malleable, but some of them are very, very stiff. So you wanna make sure that you cut off what your knife can't cut through, right? And then start, start from there and go ahead and um, chop everything. And then I don't use that little bulb that's in the center. I just cut right by that and then continue on from there. And it's really a nice mild garlic flavor. It's delicious. I think you'll like it. I want to go ahead and saute my ginger and garlic in here. So I'm going to put it in the center and I'm a little dry in the bottom of my pan. So I'm going to put a little bit more coconut oil in the bottom so that the ginger and the garlic scape have something to saute in. I'll give that a second to become fragrant. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have this really nice saute. It smells delicious. Can you smell it? And in the center, I'm gonna add my red curry paste. And so then once you put this in, you really wanna mash it down. You don't wanna just stir it in with the coconut milk. You wanna add this first, mash it down, get it sauteed. It's sort of like making a traditional curry where you have all the spices in the bottom of the pan, if you've ever done that with like some milk product, usually yogurt or something like that, and you cook it so much that the yogurt is gonna separate, right? You're activating the spices so that when you make the curry, it's like this really smooth experience on your palate. It's not like um, grainy, you know, where you really can feel those spices. So you really do need to cook the spices into the yogurt when you make a, a curry. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna mash it in. If you had some fat on the bottom, that's great. There doesn't have to be a lot of fat. And then once it heats up, I pour in a little bit of coconut, coconut milk, not all of it, just a little bit, so that I can make a homogenous mixture. Because you don't wanna have clumps of red curry hanging out in your dish, right? You wanna get it all, all homogenous right here with the coconut milk. And then once we get that all set together, then I can add the rest of my coconut milk. And then we crank up the heat a little bit to bring it to a simmer. When you get that can of coconut milk, don't shake it up, okay? What will happen is when you, because it's been sitting, the sort of the, the thicker, I don't wanna say fattier part, but the thicker part of the milk is on the top and the water part is on the, they're separated on the bottom, right? And so if you shake it up, then you get this really creamy, lovely, delicious coconut milk that's the consistency of like a heavy cream, right? Or even maybe a little thicker. But if you don't shake it up, that's what I'm recommending, that's what I'm sort of trying to say to you in the description of your, of your recipe. I'm saying take the, the um, thicker part of the coconut milk out with a spoon, okay, and use that. And then you can leave the, the water that's at the bottom. You can throw it away. If you wanna thin out your sauce, you can use the water then. But this way you have complete control over how much, how thick your coconut curry is going to be. And to this, you know you could add a number of other different things, right? You could start with some carrots in here and some onions and then add the broccoli. Um, if you even wanted to do potatoes or something like that, I would, I would cook the potatoes actually in the curry, okay. you know, certainly cubes of tofu, um, or you could, op you could actually add chicken or anything like that that you wanted as well. So use this as a base, you know, for other things. It's not just for broccoli, right? So then this can simmer a little bit. You can thicken it. You know, if you're using the light coconut milk and you just don't want to do the heavy, then just reduce it down a little bit and thicken it. Um, and then you're going to stir in a little of fish sauce but it's very, very stinky and a little bit goes a long way. So in your recipe, start with a tablespoon, you know, or start with even less, 
and then go slowly depending on what your palate likes. So a little bit in here because it does add, it does add some really nice depth of flavor and then we put in a little bit of lime juice. You know about the fifth taste umami? The description is like a roundness in your mouth. So if you think about those things that are very full, so some of those foods that, are, that, we, that we say have high umami qualities or properties are things that are fermented like fish sauce, like anchovies, right? Like um, soy sauce, like Parmesan cheese, like sun-dried tomatoes. And so it's the, the idea that you have on your palate um, taste buds that recognize amino acids, L-glutamate, those kinds of amino acids that give you that real round um, flavor profile in your, in your palate. So that's what fish sauce does, is it, um, it, it tastes a little fishy, but it really provides the salt, it provides the sugar, it provides this whole sort of round, beautiful, complete experience um, in the dish. You can totally intermix yellow curry paste, green curry paste, um, red curry paste, you know, there's, a, there's a Penang curry. So each one has a little bit of a different nuance of herb and spice in there, so you can try it.